Alright, so due to the recent gun panic, just like last time, uh, the order things come back is first so you'll get all your Turkish shotguns, Turkish pistols, and then ultimately will come like hunting shotguns, hunting rifles, then you'll get into like long range rifles, you'll start to get some tactical shotguns, then ARs will come back, and then last but not least, ammunition and reloading supplies. Usually reloading supplies, or at least last time, reloading supplies hit before the ammo did, so we'll have to see how things play out. But due to the fact that we're going through it again, well, if you go into any gun shop right now or jump on YouTube, what you're going to have up center and in front of your face will be Turkish shotguns. So what do I think about Turkish shotguns? Are they any good? Are they worth your time? Turkish shotguns are not created equal. By no means. For example, here is two Turkish shotguns. This one's a pile of crap. You can tell just by the mechanics. I think it's even recoil operated, maybe. I'd have to take it apart to confirm, but I think this is even recoil operated. And you got this Turkish shotgun, which is the clone of the Benelli M4. I approve of this design. It's not bad. It's not bad at all. And out of the crucible, of the gun shortage, there will be a couple of Turkish shotguns that stick around, like last time, the one that came out of the Crucible smiling all pretty was the Stevens 320. You know, pre-panic times this time, if you walked into a gun shop, you would see your shotguns, your hunting shotguns, your tactical shotguns, and in amongst them would be your Stevens 320. Because it came out during the panic, and people liked it. It worked. They were able to be supplied with them. They beat the crap out of them. I'm not necessarily a fan, but that one survived. I think this time, this one will also survive. So after the panic, you will go to your gun shop. You will see your Stevens 320, this shotgun, and then your normal, like, Mossbergs and shit like that. So, should you buy one of them? I'm trying to make this video in a way, if I would be back then... You know, if I had my old self, like, teleported into now times to where I'm okay with buying anything because I don't have any experience or anything like that, would I buy one of those shotguns? And it's very important to own a shotgun because you're an American, and a shotgun is more American than apple pie. And if you don't own a shotgun, then So, what would I do? To the whiteboard of knowledge. The first thing I'd inform myself, hey, if you get one of these imported shotguns, whether or not you care, 922R is a thing. So if you're going to increase the capacity, make sure there's a good aftermarket world for it, and it's got aftermarket support, because you're going to have to change some parts out in order to increase that capacity to a reasonable amount. Next thing I go, well, let's look at your budget. How big exactly is your budget? If it's flat bottom broke, I strongly recommend getting a Maverick 88. The finish on it sucks, so you're going to have to do some sort of paint job, however you decide you're going to do that. However, the firearm's not bad. And for light use, it will do everything you want. It already comes in an 8-round capacity, good to go. Well, let's pretend you have a little bit more of a budget. I would go with the Mossberg 590 series. You get a thicker barrel, metal trigger guard, it's a proven shotgun, the military uses it, beats the crap out of them, and they just keep going. Now, once upon a time, it used to be a debate over the 590 series and then the Remington 870 series, but that company took a big old fat poopy. The last one of their shotguns I seen that they put out where I'm like, that is a good firearm. Is this one right here. Since this shotgun has come out, every shotgun I've seen go across the shelf, I had to use mouthwash thoroughly because I puked in my mouth a little bit. So, I would recommend going with an old 870, or a Winchester 1300. Now, if you're looking at the old 870s and you see a two-piece bolt carrier, just walk away. Because I'm telling you, trying to get the vomit taste out of your mouth, it's rough. And if you look at the thing closely and start looking how the parts interact with each other, you're probably going to puke in your mouth. Try to get some older 870, a solid bolt design, not a two-piece, or a Winchester 1300. Like this one right here. Now this is a hunting model, so you'd have to do some conversions. You're going to have to put a tube extender on here. You 
You pull this out, put a tube extender on there, and you're gonna have to throw a different barrel on it. But relatively speaking, this could turn into your tactical shotgun pretty cheap. I mean, tube extender can't be more than like 100 bucks, say 200 bucks on the barrel, so cost of shotgun, which is very affordable, plus like $300, boom, you got yourself a tactical shotgun. Now let's pretend you have a little bit more budget. So you're over the net, the 590 budget and the older 870s and 1300s. Now what I'd recommend is a 930. Now I don't recommend staying in this budget spot. Yes, the shotguns are decent, they work, but they're lacking a couple of features I'd really like to see on a semi-auto shotgun. For example, if you push the button on the side of it, this button right here, it will drop two shells on the carrier, jamming your lifter and cause a malfunction. I'm calling this the suicide button. The reason I call that is because it does two things. One, it drops the bolt. The, section, the second function it does is helps you unload the shotgun. Push in your low gate, press the button, pull out your shells. Okay, well, I got a cartridge in the chamber. I'm coming around the corner or whatever. We'll just, I don't care what the reason is. Maybe you do a flying chest bump with your buddy because he did something awesome. Point is this button gets pushed. Now you got a double feed. There's two cartridges in front of your tube, or in front of your load gate. So you'd fire, the bolt will come back to the rear, and now it's jammed. So now you gotta hold your bolt back, get your finger in there. Did I get it? Push that cartridge back inside the tube, and then you're ready to go. Definitely not ideal. You know, that's not really that big of a deal. What are the odds you're gonna hit the button? However, I just don't like it, so I avoid that particular design. <clears throat> the next thing the 930s are lacking is a chrome line barrel. Is it that big of a deal in a shotgun? Probably not. But I learned at a very young age, if you buy something of quality and you take care of it, it's likely to last your entire life. So I like quality parts. That includes a chrome line bolt carrier, chrome line chamber, and chrome line burial, which the Mossberg 930 does not have. So, you're damn near at an FN SPL price when you hit the 930. What I'd recommend is skipping over the 930 and go straight into the FN SPL. That will come with your chrome line burial, chrome line bolt carrier. It's made by a bougie company that makes quality parts. They are currently supplying the military with M4s. They make good stuff. That's the next shotgun I would go. Now, I don't really see a difference other than preference between the SPL and the Beretta 1300 or the 1301. Now, the old models used to have the same problem as the Mossberg 930 where you press a button on the side and it would cause a malfunction. From what I'm told, that's been corrected. So, you should be able, good to go. So, once you skip over the 930, I would jump at the Beretta 1301 or the FN SPL. Now, if you want to go full tactical, then your only choice left is the Italian Stallion. That would be your Beretta, or your Benelli M4. This is what the current military is using for a semi-automatic shotgun. It looks pretty cool, and it's got all the parts you'd want. The button does not cause a malfunction. Oh, it's too far back. The bolt, as you can see, is chrome-lined. The chamber's chrome-lined. The barrel's chrome-lined. You are stuck with ghost ring sights, but for whatever reason, they put them on basically all semi-auto shotguns, so that really doesn't matter. Unless you go with the 930 Home Security, which is an excellent selling point for that particular shotgun. The, nine, the 930 Home Security is like the only semi-auto shotgun that's going to come with a high capacity and a bead sight. And a bead sight is what you want on a shotgun, but because this particular one doesn't, you're going to have to go with ghost ring sights, so whatever you know do what you got to do i wish the 930 didn't have the suicide button i wish it had a chrome line barrel because then i would be pumping the crap out of that shotgun because that would be my favorite because it would have everything i'd want out of a shotgun semi-auto bead sight high capacity chrome line barrel chrome line chamber chrome line bolt non-suicide button so is there any one shotgun I strongly don't recommend? I recommend just staying away from Turkish shotguns altogether. I would get the real deal in this order. 
Another shotgun I recommend staying away from is your magazine fed shotguns. Like this one right here. They do, they look cool as hell and they might function properly. But the downside with a magazine fed shotgun, especially this bull pulp one, if I learn how to run this shotgun really good, this is the only shotgun I can run good. What do I mean by that? None of the parts mean, or none of the controls have any commonality with standard shotguns. For example, if I learn how to run, say, this Winchester 1300 really good, I will know generally how more or less every single pump action works. So if I get good with this, I can basically pick up any pump action shotgun, any pump action shotgun out there, and I will run it effectively. All the same controls. You got your bolt, your pump release, safety. Now sometimes the safety's in a different spot, but safety. Feed. Trigger. It's all the same. All the same controls. Shoot pump. Shoot pump. Everything's the same. Now say I were to get like a Mossberg 930 or a Benelli or something like that. Generally speaking, if I learn how to run that particular shotgun, I will be good with any of them. Again, the Mossberg's the oddball, but for example, the Benelli has one extra control. That's this right here. This is what allows the shotgun to feed. It also locks your bolt to the rear. Some do not have this, but most of them do. So aside from this one button difference, if I learn how to run this shotgun good, I can basically pick up any semi-auto shotgun and be able to run it good. I'll understand all the controls. I'll understand how everything works. I can pick it up. Oh, well, there's my safety. Oh, there's my feed. Throw a shell in the chamber, load the tube, take off safety, go to work. An AK-12, or I'm not actually sure if that's the model number, or something like this, I'm only learning how to run this particular platform. If I switch to any other platform, the controls are gonna be different and everything I learned on this particular platform is gonna be obsolete for every other platform out there. So I recommend you either get a standardized pump action, this way you understand all pump actions, or a standardized semi-auto, this way you understand all semi-autos. Other than that, man, it, this is America. Just get a shotgun. That's all that really matters. Wiping all that crap off the table, as long as you're firing shotgun shells, that's that's the bottom line. That's, that's the end of it. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video, or at least found it entertaining. Like to help support the channel, got my Patreon right there. I also have affiliate links in the description down below. Just by clicking on those links, even if you don't purchase what that particular link is for, just clicking on that and then doing the Amazon shopping you're going to do anyway, a little kickback for it because you came there off my channel. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. Why do you gotta be such a heartless little brat? If I am such a brat, then why don't you spank me right now, daddy? And show me what a bad girl I have been in. Teach me a lesson. Okay, I might have been overreacting a little bit, Lacey. I love you. I'm never gonna trade you in. I love you too. It's not the action I wanted, but it's the action I can get.